Hello guys and welcome back. So the way I'm going to to add forces is using something called the meta ball. And let me check something super quick. And the way this uh, meta ball works is it defines uh, an object. It def you define a geometry. that has a radius like that and then we're going to place this uh, somewhere inside the sim so let me template this and I'm going to make it bigger and stretch it like that let's add a transform node or actually it has a transform node so let's just move it inside and I want to create an explosion out of uh, explosion force out of this I'm gonna use a node called force that goes goes in conjunction with uh, with this and I'm gonna turn on the directional force I'm gonna set the vector to minus one I'm going to set the actual uh, axial force to 250. Uh, you can design, you have uh, control to design various things with this with this force, with this meta ball. Let's create a null. Call this out meta ball force. Create an object merge. I'd like to use an object merge to copy the path directly. And let's go back inside. Now, uh, this is something very, um, very hard to digest in the beginning. But as once we start learning more about Houdini, it, it's going to make more sense. Now, the so what we need to do is we need to execute a diff a particle node, a pop node called the pop meta ball and because these rbd objects are actually points inside the system we can use the the pop system to interact with them but r right now we have a bullet solver node and houdini has another node that will allow us to stitch or connect these guys so i'm going to use this node called rigid body solver and this node has give us access to uh, the various systems in um, very solvers in Houdini. The RBD is the default one, the bullet is the one, the newest one. There used to be a one called ODE and they uh, they removed it. Okay, I'm gonna connect that. It's basically the same. I'm gonna leave the settings as they are and then for the uh, it gives us access to this node. So I'm gonna connect that here and then the force is going to be coming from SOPS. And you can see the visualizer there and let's set it to 100. Let's turn this off and let's hit play. And there we go. We have a huge force pushing the system. Cool. So uh, I'm going to save you guys time and it's going to be really hard for us to get this force to behave and work nicely and the reason for that is because there is constraint in inside this and the way uh, the, the best way to get the system going is to weaken the constraints next to this area and we saw that we, if we declare uh, an attribute called strength it can be used to help uh, help with that to we can control sorry the strength of the of the forces here so I'm gonna say F as strength is equal to 1 this is not gonna change anything okay and then I'm gonna take this force here and say VDB from polygon and where is it? it's gonna I'm just gonna convert this into a volume and then I'm gonna scatter points here inside this volume so let's set them to 10,000 and let's call this out force PQ 
he has four points. And this is for relative paths. So I'm going to copy this and here. I'm going to set the color of these constraints to something different. Set it to black. And then I'm going to use an attribute transfer and transfer that black over. Set it to, so here it's black. We'll set it black here and then red in, uh, in the force. CD. What's happening? doesn't want to work with this path, that's fine. Okay, cool. So now we're transferring that red information, we're just going to lower the, the distance, so it's only there. And then I'm going to use this information to weaken uh, as a multiplier. So I'm just going to set this to 1, set this to black, uh, maybe too much, something like that. And then I'm going to use uh, the strength and multiply it by the color dot red v at cd dot x. This sign is just to replace typing this. Okay, you can just do it all in one line. And if we look at the strength attribute now, it should be uh, lower in some areas. Yeah. So it's much lower in those areas. And we have to make sure that it's a primitive attribute. Okay, and let's go back in. Now it's been taking into account here because this is called strength. It's been taking into account here because this is minus one, so nothing is going to happen. But inside this, it's not uh, being taken into account. So I'm going to say if at force is uh, multiplied by f at strength don't need the f. This means that whatever the force value is multiply it by 1 or uh, something lower. So the condition is lower in these guys, uh, in this region. And this way, I know I set the force high, but uh, this way it's going to be much easier for the system to break that area and then everything else will follow. I'm going to uh, change it to be a bit smaller and we don't need it to be active for uh, forever. So I'm going to say $FF or $F, F, yeah. So the FF is for uh, the frame even between the subsamples. So if we have 10 subsamples, the frame goes 1, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, all the way to 2. So $FF is the, uh, the text to use for that. So let's say if frame equal equal to 5, execute this, otherwise not. So it's just going to happen on one frame. Everything is falling down. I think the the pin is, uh, is too big, probably. And we need to increase the force. Let's try 20,000. Uh, sorry, 20. So see the force, for example, it dragged all the pieces that are next to it. That's because the pin constraint didn't break enough. There was not enough force to break the pin constraint. So we have we have to go back in and, and tweak this further. But so far, look at this motion here. Come on. This bending bending motion is very very realistic to get this nice bending before things fracture is very very cool so let's lower a few things let's lower the strength again as i said this 
having an active RBD object generally uh, produces much more, uh, much better energy that can that works better with the uh, glue and stuff like that with the constraint in general. Having an external force is a little bit uh, trickier, but it works. So let's say ten thousand here. We can also use the angle, so let's do the angle. If at angle, I'm not going to multiply it by strength because uh, it's already a sensitive value. So if the angle is uh, higher than six, break it, break the pin constraint. And let's, um, I want to make the this guy smaller. And increase the spiral. See how that how that affects the result. So another way to hold the entire system together, even with this, is to have another glue cluster that is very weak that breaks instantly. Uh, we can have all that on on the entire system to hold it up just enough for it to. Um, uh, for the forces to kick in and or we can pin various parts of the system to make it structure uh, solid okay let's do another round I'm gonna lower this to 20 by 20,000 and I'm gonna lower this by, sorry I'm gonna lower 10 divided by 10 basically and So the way I've uh, done the force for uh, for the example that I showed in the video is I created multiple forces in SOPs and I timed them uh, to only show up in, in one frame. This way it's easier for me to, uh, to tweak. still not breaking for some reason so you know what I'm gonna do something uh, a bit more dangerous I'm gonna increase this radius here a bit more and I'm actually going to delete them in some cases I ended up deleting the constraint so let's do if x is higher than is lower than 0 0.6 remove points or actually remove frame no, there is no such function I think I know why no it's working okay so prim zero for the input geometry and that should remove the geometry and we need to change this to run on points cool so it's that whole area is is removed now we can also do it on a the glue constraint only and, and keep the pin if we wanted to let's go back I'm gonna disable the this force as well the the glue constraint that is that has minus one that holds the pieces together. Yeah, so it's much better now. And this is again uh, deleting the constraint is another way, but I highly encourage you guys to try and break the constraint with the force, and um, uh, and get it to work with that uh, with that system. Okay, so let's do this go back up I want to group some pieces from the top it's annoying me so I'm gonna add another group actually this group we can extend as well and this group let's add 
this guys and I'm gonna say instead of replacing existing union with existing so now the group has all the pieces that needs to be sold and let me show you the graph for the forces I used So this is uh, this is the forces with just switch system, and then let me template this, and they just show up in different frames. That's it. Cool. But for now, I'm gonna just stick to this because the um, the idea is the same. Let's hit play, and hopefully we this by pinning this part we we're not gonna see pieces falling down yeah so it's working the pin constraint is still strong and maybe adding some other forces will break the whole system as well and this part really it's up to you guys I don't have any anything uh, more to show you you just have to place uh, the forces choreograph them uh, to create something interesting uh, one idea I had was to break these pillars one at a time like uh, an explosion bam 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 on all these pillars and have the entire system fall down so that's something that you guys can explore as well so see these pieces are reaching up far way too far what we can do is uh, we can add a pop speed limit and this controls how fast an object, a pop object can travel. I'm going to say max speed to 300 and that will uh, stop stop the forces basically. Uh, we can also add a pop drag. Again, uh, I know it's weird but you can use pop operators on uh, in sim in with RBD as well because these are packed primitives and they are points and it's Houdini see what we have well I think we need to uh, work on the pin constraint a bit more so that when <clears throat> when this bends like that it breaks and I really want to get it to do that so see the pieces are not traveling as far now okay let's do one last attempt. I'm going to lower this to 2000 only and this to I'm not going to use the strength maybe that's why I'm going to lower this to 300 and this is this is correct thinking that the pin constraint is not breaking at all since we changed this but uh, to me this looks correct let's go up yeah, I think the pin the pin is definitely not breaking so let's go back and to the old system and maybe uh, something is happening here. And let's go back up. I am going to turn off the strength attribute. I'm going to keep it the same. Okay. Yeah, I think the expression was not working for some reason. Maybe it's the strength I've changed various values, but uh, I think you guys got the idea. Cool. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to do uh, wood fracturing quickly, and then we're going to learn how to add the interior details and deform the high-res version of this. I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit.